When people ask me what I do, I say I'm a single family rental advisory. We have a single family rental advisory firm and we advise clients on how to execute their strategy in the single family rental space. We have these two positions that we're filling, maybe three, um, but two of them right away. Directors of sales for our portfolio services division. These are good jobs, right? There's good salary component, a great commission component, benefits component. You're in the path of all kinds of leads, right? What people do not get, because I never would assume the inbound business development here is outrageous because so many new players come in and they're trying to figure out how are we going to buy a bunch of houses and how are we going to manage them? And the thing that really strikes fear in their heart is how the heck we're going to manage them. And so they always seem to wind up at our doorstep. And so we need competent people who can talk the talk. So like when, when you think about the skill sets, like give me a description of there's two or three different kinds of people sure. that would fit on the team. What do you think works? Well, let's talk about the, what they'd really be doing and it gets in the skill sets. I mean, we're selling institutional property management and acquisition real estate services. I kind of liken it to we are an SFR advisory firm. Right. So if somebody comes in and they say, hey, you know, our, our plan is to start buying homes here. We need a property management component. We need a, a disposition component. I mean, one of the clients we're working with now, it's all three, right? They're coming in, they want us to manage properties in, in new markets. They want us to sell properties they have, and they sure want us to find properties if we could. So it kind of all goes together. So the kind of person we're looking for, number one, most likely has experience doing this already. So they've worked well, that's with- the that's, that's the first category. We've gotten resumes of folks with commercial real estate backgrounds. We can talk about that. Other corporate backgrounds, but there's no substitute for somebody who- you know, like what's SFR, single family rentals. They they know the whole story of invitation homes and American homes for rent and all the players that came in. You know, they participated in this crazy 10 years. I mean, it's really funny. Like everybody in this industry went to a second chapter. The senior guys at invitation homes stuck with the same chapter, right? Because they, they won in the first chapter, so they continued. But everybody else had a win on their books and then pivoted. So for me, it was Own America pivoting towards this full service investment shop uh, combined with Renner's Warehouse. For you, it was loading up IH in Chicagoland. You ran that team in Chicago and sold them a couple thousand houses uh, and then jumped into a couple of different roles and landed here for your second act. Like, do you see people yeah. out there? So, uh, you know, I kind of look at like what, what my background was. And so there's different types of SFR experience. There is SFR experience and you work in a local market and you sell some homes to, to investors. There's SFR experience is that you worked in a local market, but you're working on a very large scale, maybe uh, somebody with a commercial real estate background. You know, the reason I like commercial real estate backgrounds is because if you're in commercial real estate and you had any kind of success, you've gone through the meat grinder of a dog eat dog world. So then you're able to talk to a CEO of a fund right. that might have a really quirky personality and you've got to deal with all of that minutia. And then you're also able to look at a house and, and understand why the numbers are off or, or you know, the, the transaction level. And the numbers, if I rattle the names off, the top 10 SFR owner operators, how many folks worked in those companies as directors of acquisition, vice president of acquisitions, right? A lot of the guys that did those roles, they were mostly guys. We know them now. They went and started brokerages in different geographies because they were the regional president for two states for one of the funds and then the consolidation happened. I guess the idea is that it'd be cool like to actually play this video on LinkedIn and let people say, yo, that describes me. Maybe we'll do that because right. if they follow either one of us, they're used to seeing us just riffing a little bit on what's going on this week. And what's going on this week is that you are bringing a team together. Like the first question you asked me a couple of days ago, what if you know an investment agent within our company wants to jump on this team? So the first question you got to ask him is, give me the lowdown of the yields in your market. And if they don't know, then they can't apply, right? Like it's, if you work right. at Renders Warehouse, it's too late to learn what yields are. That means you have not been paying attention in training for the last 18 months. We need people that we can direct toward client opportunities that we already have. They can sit in on client opportunities that we already have and actually do more than window dressing. They can actually carry, carry weight and they go out and bring in relationships they have and we can sell property management, acquisition services, disposition, or any combination of the three. Yeah, it's a. Uh, this isn't a. You know, I have all the. I have all the skill sets around this, and so I think I can figure this out. This is SFR experience, a sense of urgency, a sense of ownership, and being a self-starter. I, I kind of look at this. We're talking about hiring two to three people, but two people right off the bat. One is probably a little bit more senior, and one is a. Hey, what'd you do today? I called fifty builders. Okay, great. Let's yeah. go to the next market. 
What are yeah, you doing tomorrow? Yeah. I'm going to call that's 50 builders good. in this market. You know, that junior person is probably in the commercial real estate business, understands SFR, you know, can go and underwrite 50 homes, no problem. It gets that because those, the skills uh, transcend. And then the other position is more of a, hey, I've, I've been doing this. Yeah, I know those people. They, maybe they know a lot of people that we already know. They would even be better, right? Or somebody um, who sold property management with one of the one of the other larger shops yes. that wishes they could make money selling portfolios and stuff. Somebody who works for OS National in sales, who knows? Somebody who works for Corvest or one of the other big lenders who like is getting out of lending but knows all these players. It's a good opportunity yeah. because we're we're kind of on fire right now and we've got more business that we can all handle. I like what you said though about the idea that when you're hiring one person, like who's the ideal person? When you're hiring three, you could say, I want a pit bull over here that's going to prospect all day long on whatever list I give them to who are not afraid of making phone calls. Because this is not cold calling. This is, I'm an SFR specialist. Are you an SFR person? How many calls do you have a week with people that there's no business to be done right now? They're never like, leave me alone. I don't want to buy. It's like, they're like, I'm not ready to buy, but tell me what you're seeing out there in the industry, Noel. But having somebody like that is the perfect compliment for somebody who's the opposite, who is more senior and can take any kind of inbound or anything that the bird dog turns up. You know, the next thing to step into that, because in the world that we're in, you know, your, your digital social presence, I'm not talking Facebook, talking LinkedIn, it's really important. If it's a person that's like, oh, you know, that LinkedIn thing, I'll figure it out someday. LinkedIn is probably the number one driver of our business. I think that's why we should definitely do this. We should definitely use this in LinkedIn because yeah. you spend a lot of energy leading by example. There are very few people with senior vice president type titles in LinkedIn anywhere who are actually willing to put themselves out. I heard a podcast recently on the subject and there are people that are just not willing. They think building a personal brand cheapens them and they're wrong. Like it hasn't cheapened your world, right? Everybody that I talk to that knows you, if you're not on the call, they say, yeah, I know, no, I follow all the stuff. I'm sure you hear from them also. Anyway, point is, is that you don't want to hire anybody who you're going to have to talk into the value of networking via LinkedIn. You want them to already be somebody who gets it because you can add a huge yeah. amount of value to their world. Uh, and I can add some as well to show them how to find their yeah, job. Yeah, I mean, if the work ethic is there, and so that's kind of what I was going into too, you know, sense of urgency, uh, that work ethic, you know, certain skill set, like self, self-starter. self So those are, those are some of the things. And and if you're, you're already doing it on LinkedIn, we can refine it. And we're even talking about adding some even more resources to really help us amplify our voice because if everybody's saying the same thing and we're all amplifying our voice, it just yeah, incredible. Similar themes in the same directions. You know, I think one of the things that came out of the meeting last week was how Trish is like using the technology that we built. That stuff got built three years ago uh, before we even joined Renner's Warehouse. And it's so cool, the portfolio visualizer. She's using it. I love what she said. I mean, we have legitimately the best tools for SFR salespeople uh, in the industry. And to my knowledge, nobody else has anything. I mean, look, if you don't make 150 grand in this job, you can't keep it, right? And it really should be a 250 gig and it has the potential to be a, a 650 gig, but it's really a quarter million dollar gig. You know, 250 to yeah. 400 is the range of where somebody's well, successful. If you're willing to roll up your sleeves, right? This isn't a yeah, kickback. Yeah, work 50 and, hours a week. You know, like work all 50 in. hours. Work them all. Again, that's why I'm, I'm happy you're the one doing the hiring on this. This is cool. I'm excited about it. I'm really happy you're spearheading yeah. it. What we do have is we have a crap ton of clients who are coming to us first. We are the first person they call. And sometimes they're milking us for information, right? But we're the first person they call because we can offer property management acquisition services. When people ask me what I do, I say I'm a single family rental advisory. We have a single family rental advisory firm and we advise clients on how to execute their strategy in the single family rental space. And we're being taken up on that now more than ever, right? I mean, the five people with a bag of money in a conference room in Scottsdale, Arizona, find their way to us because they're trying to figure out how the hell are we going to manage these houses and how are we going to buy them all, especially in a tight market. And so all of our experience on the MLS acquisitions, plus your build to rent experience, which I think you're the leading guy. You got to be one of the leading people in the industry. Plus me as the portfolio platform, we led that charge. We have all those channels. Like we have the technology and the clients already in place. Now we need the manpower to be able to bring those all together and turn it into revenue. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, cool, man. I agree.